Good morning, I'm Armando Colombo, President and CEO at the Menninger Clinic, and I want to welcome you all to our groundbreaking for our Outpatient Services Center. The Outpatient Services Center at the Menninger Clinic will allow us to strengthen our continuum of care by building intensive outpatient services, partial hospitalization services, many more outpatient assessment specific services to go along with our sleep medicine lab and our brain simulation services. This will allow greater access to the Menninger Clinic for our community and folks in Houston who have not been able to access us before. This Outpatient Services Center will launch collaborative arrangements with the Baylor College of Medicine, including dedicated research space, dedicated educational space for our fellows, for our researchers, and for our visiting professors from the Baylor College of Medicine. Our research department under the direction of Michelle Patrick Quinn and our educational services under the direction of Cynthia Mulder will be greatly enhanced with this new project. The Menninger Clinic is extremely honored to have our education center named after Dr. Stuart Udofsky, the former chair of the Department of Psychiatry at Baylor College of Medicine, who was instrumental in bringing the Menninger Clinic here to Houston. This expansion for the Menninger Clinic really continues the legacy of outpatient services. I'd like to introduce Dr. Walter Menninger and Dr. Roy Menninger to talk about the history of the Menninger Clinic. It's a special privilege to participate in this ceremony, albeit uh, digitally, uh, to break ground for the new Menninger Outpatient Clinic facility. When my uncle, Dr. Carl, in 1919, returned to Topeka, he joined his father, Dr. C.F., and began the clinical practice of psychiatry and neurology. The practice was largely outpatient and when the psychiatric patients needed hospital care, they were housed in a general hospital locally. In 1925, they opened a small hospital of 12 beds in a farmhouse outside of town. Initially, the patients were largely neurological, late stage syphilis, post-1919 flu epidemic victims, and other neurological disorders. The hospital slowly grew to 135 beds, the staff came to include mental health professionals from various disciplines, working, teaching, and learning together. Their collaboration generated a climate of excitement, challenge, and discovery in a setting which was immersive, supportive, mutually respectful, and emotionally satisfying. As the practice expanded in scope and in numbers, the clinic provided not only in and outpatient clinical services, but education, research, and public outreach. Accordingly, newer, modernized facilities were constructed to facilitate the work of the institution. Following the war, the great need for psychiatric treatment of psychologically damaged veterans led to the development of a training program under the leadership of Dr. Carl. The Menninger School of Psychiatry opened in 1948 with 108 residents in training. The founders committed to a growth of psychiatric knowledge, established a grant-supported program for basic and clinical research. A quarter century ago, Menninger occupied two campuses, outreach offices, and supervised living residences in Topeka, and had established affiliations in Missouri, Arizona, Florida, and California. Menninger's commitment to treatment, education, and research was increasingly challenged by economic forces which limits on healthcare reimbursement. That prompted a search for a medical school partner. This culminated in our affiliation with the Baylor College of Medicine and the decision to move our clinical operations to Houston in 2003. In making that move, the initial services to be relocated were the inpatient services. In the past few years, there has been an increase in the scope of services provided by Menninger in Houston, gradually moving toward the full range of clinical services. This occasion marks an appropriate next step toward that goal, and I am honored and delighted to be a part of it. Thank you. The addition of outpatient services to the Houston Menninger Clinic is a vital step towards integrated treatment of the system of care 
and the clinic's engagement with the community. I congratulate the staff, the Menninger Clinic leadership, the board, and especially the generous donors who have made this all possible. Thank you. The Menninger Clinic is so fortunate to have such wonderful support from our board and our board chairs. And so I'd like to introduce Ronnie Cunard, our clinic board director, Jeffrey Payne, our foundation board director, and Vivi O'Sullivan, a significant member of both the foundation board and the clinic board over the years. I stepped into this role at Menninger because of the mental health issues we experienced in our own family when our second son Grayson died almost 13 years ago. The challenges in mental health are multifaceted. Some of those are funding. Some of those are things like we're experiencing today with COVID. Menninger has been able to maintain his position as a top 10 psychiatric hospital in the United States. And we're doing things like bringing on Armando here as our chief executive officer to put us in position for that. With our affiliate Baylor College of Medicine, we have access to a lot of folks who want to come train here, who want to be full-time psychiatrists, psychologists, social workers. We are trying to make sure that we touch the people that need to be touched and help the people that need to be helped. The Menninger Clinic outpatient building will elevate the profile of mental health services and reduce the stigma of people needing to seek out mental health services. I have a brother who is affected by mental illness and I can remember very clearly when I was younger, there was such a stigma associated with mental health as there has been with addiction and, and other mental health related diseases. And hopefully one day we're gonna be in a position where the stigma is reduced and people will seek out mental health services the way they would go to a gym or the way that they would go to any other type of organization that would help them improve their lives. So that's really something that I believe will come out of this effort to build this new facility. Our new CEO, Armando Colombo, brings more of a market-driven business acumen to the services that are provided. So we're gonna be much more focused on what our community needs in terms of services and programming, but also the Baylor College of Medicine to provide those services at a level where very few organizations across the country or in the world are able to provide them. With COVID and many of the other stressors that are impacting the greater community, we feel that Menninger can continue to step up and meet people where they are. Everyone has a family member who has struggled with these things. So I think it's super important for us more than ever to address that stigma and try to erase that by continually growing new programs and really broadening the conversation. The support of the Baylor College of Medicine has been tremendous since my arrival here at the Manninger Clinic. And I'm very pleased to have Dr. Paul Klotman and Dr. Wayne Goodman join us to say a few words about the collaboration between the Baylor College of Medicine and the Menninger Clinic in our community. Hey, I wanna congratulate uh, the Menninger Clinic uh, on this groundbreaking. It's a very uh, important event. Uh, we have been working with the Menninger uh, Foundation and the Menninger Clinic since they moved here in 2003. This groundbreaking is for an important new uh, outpatient building. It gives us an opportunity to provide expanded care. Uh, we all know that uh, Mental health issues are huge right now, particularly in the middle of a pandemic. So there can be nothing more important uh, symbolically or really to have a fantastic uh, outpatient facility. So congratulations, everyone, and look forward to the events of the day. Hello, everyone. Wayne Goodman here. I wish to congratulate Mr. Armando Colombo on this milestone to expand the continuum of clinical services for the Menninger Clinic. I'm proud of our affiliation with the Menninger Clinic. As you embark on this next phase, I look forward to partnering with you on our tripartite missions of clinical care, education, and research. Mr. Colombo has already demonstrated his commitment to expanding educational opportunities at Menninger by providing additional support for our fellowship programs. I can also envision many prospects 
for conducting collaborative clinical research in the new building. We recently concluded a successful search for the new chief of staff at Menninger, who will also serve as vice chair for the Department of Psychiatry. Bob Boland, MD, currently faculty at Harvard, will serve as an important bridge between Baylor and Menninger that will enhance our ability to leverage the strengths of both organizations. This new outpatient services building will offer many new opportunities to collaborate that advance the understanding and treatment of mental disorders. Once again, congratulations on taking this next step towards ensuring that the Menninger Clinic, together with Baylor College of Medicine, will be at the vanguard of psychiatric care. Best wishes to all of you. The Menninger Clinic Outpatient Services has grown from a very tiny number of visits to about 12,000 today. The leader of that service line is Dr. Jonathan Stevens. And I'm very pleased to have him join us today to talk about the future growth of our outpatient services and how they fit with our new building. Here in Houston, there are a lot of needs for mental health, particularly for children, adolescents, and older adults. The outpatient building is gonna be a major advance for patients seeking care at the Menninger Clinic. This will be a state-of-the-art facility that offers them a place to seek services they can't get anywhere else, whether that's new sleep lab services under the guidance of Dr. Chester Wu, brain stimulation services under the direction of Dr. Neil Purry, or comprehensive four-and-a-half-day assessments under the leadership of Dr. Alton Bozeman. This will be an epicenter outpatient site on Menninger's beautiful 50-acre campus that will be like no other anywhere in Houston and beyond. There'll be a play therapy room a room for us to do detailed assessments for those with developmental disorders such as autism spectrum disorder, and more space for therapists and doctors to meet with their patients in a comfortable but yet state-of-the-art building. Patients will now sleep at Menninger overnight to have their sleep studies completed. For some of the brain stimulation techniques, we need new and specialized rooms to allow for intravenous ketamine, electroconvulsive therapy, or transmagnetic cranial stimulation. Some of these patients may also opt for research here at the Menninger Clinic, and we have a rapidly growing research arm. Patients will not have to move or cross campus to get their service, but rather will have it in one centralized location, which will be easier, more comfortable, and certainly more convenient. The designs were influenced by patients themselves. The waiting areas are open, comfortable, and patient-centered. Thank you to all the people involved in making this building a reality. I would like to take a moment to thank all of those involved in this project, from our clinic board, our foundation board, all of our staff, but especially our donors, who have such dedication to the Menninger Clinic and helping those in our community. On behalf of the Menninger Clinic, thank you all. We're thankful and want to thank the Baylor College of Medicine. They are an important partner that gives the Menninger Clinic access to unique resources, research initiatives that will help affected families. The Menninger staff, the clinicians, everyone at the clinic and the clinic's leadership, the board volunteers, both the clinic board and the foundation board and ambassadors the work, the advocates out in the community, and perhaps most importantly to our donors who we all are so thankful for. I think it's one of those things where if you have been affected directly by mental health issues in your family, it is seared on your soul. And we've seen that. We've seen that through our donor base where people are quietly passionate about supporting the organization because they know how hard it is when you have a loved one who is affected by mental health issues. And so that's a tribute to our, our many, many donors, our incredible advocates and, and volunteers that are part of this great organization. We are so grateful to all of our supporters and donors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome everyone attending in person and via live stream. I'm Armando Colombo, President and CEO of the Manninger Clinic. We're here to celebrate the groundbreaking of the Manninger Clinic's Outpatient Services and Education Center today. I would like to acknowledge the support from everyone who has been instrumental in bringing this building to fruition. Partners at our academic affiliate, Baylor College of Medicine, 
especially Paul Klopman and Dr. Wayne Goodman, who have shown tremendous support for me in the clinic since I've been here. The Menninger family members, Dr. Roy and Dr. Walt Menninger, the clinic's board and foundation leadership, including Ronnie Cunod and Jeffrey Payne are with me today. The executive leadership team that has supported moving this project forward. And of course, none of this would be possible without our generous donors who supported the Menninger Clinic and our community has been nothing short of spectacular. Special thanks to our outpatient leaders, John Stevens, Chester Wu, Neil Purry, Alton Bozeman, and the entire outpatient staff at the Menninger Clinic. This new building is one more piece in expanding the services at the Menninger Clinic for many more people in need and our community here in Houston. This building means a future full of possibility for the Menninger Clinic and our collaborators. But it's also a chance to reflect on our past and where we came from. And so I'm honored to introduce Justice Eric Rosen to speak about the history of the Menninger Clinic and his family's involvement. Thank you, Armando. Oh yeah, I think I will do this also. Thank you. Thank you, Armando. Being here today is an especially meaningful moment for me. I'm here not only as a representative of the Kansas Board and of my hometown and state, but for my entire family. In 1952, my father, Irwin C. Rosen, better known as Irv, was accepted into the first class of the Menninger Postdoctorate Psychology Training Program. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he, my mother Betty, and my then three-year-old older brother Larry moved to Topeka, Kansas. As with both psychiatric trainees and postdoctorate fellows, my father anticipated his time in Topeka would be temporary, that his fellowship would be an educational launching pad to greater heights in a more urban setting, better suited to his personality and interests. But as with many of his peers, the Menninger ethos took hold and never let go. In 1954, he graduated as the first postdoctorate fellow in psychology. Later, he joined both the Psychoanalytic Institute, graduating from both the adult and the child and adolescent programs in the 1960s. He served as chief psychologist for over 20 years, director of the psychotherapy service for 12 years, and perhaps most proudly and significantly for today, he was director of the adult outpatient department for, from 1974 to 1989. For half a century, his passion in life was consumed by the work at this place of healing, education, and research. In December of 2002, Dad spoke at his 80th birthday celebration of his life work at Menninger and offered these words, and I'll quote him. Many of us gathered here tonight are united by having worked together to build and grow the Menninger Clinic and I count it as one of my great gifts of my life to have spent almost 50 years in that matchless place of healing, teaching, and discovery. It was not only a Topeka institute, institution, but we saw it become a pioneering resource of help for the men, mentally ill in the country and in the world. People like Margaret Mead, Eleanor Roosevelt, Anna Freud, Helen Keller, Aldous Huxley, Nobel laureate Isaac Bashevis Singer, Rosalind Carter, and many others came here as visitors and board members and interacted warmly and vitally with our patients and staff. It was an unequal place to live, to work, and to grow. These words struck me as significant back then, but they seem profound now. For many, the Menninger community was a family affair, ours included. My mother worked as a research assistant for the renowned Philip Holzman in his cutting-edge schizophrenia research. My brother, Dr. Donald Rosen, completed his psychiatric residency at Menninger and worked there for 17 years, holding a variety of leadership titles, including the founding director of what is now known as the Menninger's Professional Program in 1991. In 1999, he left Menninger for Portland to join the faculty at the Oregon Health Sciences University, where he is currently an affiliate professor of psychiatry and has a private practice. My sister-in-law and Don's wife, Lori, worked at Menninger for 20 years as an art therapist and a psychotherapist. And most importantly for me, in the summer of 1969, at the very mature age of 16, my relationship with my wife and life partner, Libby Averill, 
was sealed at the Menninger swimming pool. Libby's father, Stuart Averill, entered the psychiatric residency program at Menninger in 1953 and eventually became the hospital director at the same period of time that my father was outpatient director. Now normally I kind of take a dim view of nepotism, but I guess in some cases it kind of works out just fine. It did for me especially. The environment that I grew up in was unique, colorful and rich. At most Menninger gatherings one could detect heavy accents, not only from every corner of our country, but from nearly every continent around the globe. Having friends with such diverse backgrounds enriched our lives and impacted our community in many positive ways that most did not appreciate until its absence. Menninger provided a coll collective and culturally diverse experience for our families and communities that is impossible to fully capture and will undoubtedly be difficult to replicate. A while, just shortly ago, I mentioned the Menninger ethos. What Menninger offered something for its people that they could not get anywhere else. And understanding that by growing your staff and promoting opportunities, you create an environment that enriches the lives of all of those providing for its mission. From paying for a food service worker's GED to emphasizing educational and professional opportunities at every level, education, education was a constant. As a child in the Rosen household, I bore witness to this principle. Every Tuesday night from 7.30 to 9, it was quiet time at our house as my dad taught a class at our home for psychology trainees. Menninger was the first to open the door for consideration of non-physicians for analytic training. Irv, my father, along with his colleague Herb Schlesinger, were trailblazers, becoming the first non-medically trained analysts certified by the American Psychoanalytic Institute. Multiply that dedication, that loyalty, that commitment by the thousands of wonderful people, from groundskeepers, food service workers, and to all of those that, pro that provided direct patient care, researchers, educators, administrators, directors, who worked at Menninger during this time, and you begin to conceptualize why this institution became a world leader in the treatment of mental illness. A cornerstone of the Menninger philosophy recognized that the therapeutic alliance has an unparalleled influences on its successful outcomes. My father understood this. His cherished role as outpatient director was knowing and appreciation each of his clinician's strengths and carefully matching those with patient needs, thereby maximizing therapeutic impact. In spite of experiencing the decision and the subsequent move to Houston as an overwhelming personal and professional loss, my father closed with these words about the future of his beloved Menninger Clinic at the aforementioned 2002 80th birthday celebration which was held at Temple Beth Shalom in Topeka. And I'm gonna quote him again. Now in order to remain viable and to revitalize its mission, Menninger is joining forces with the Baylor College of Medicine and the Methodist Hospital of Houston. Tonight in this place of worship, we express our prayers and our hopes for its renewed success. Earlier, I spoke of the gift, of, hu of human gift of internalization and its power to transform those who we loved and lost into parts of ourselves as we become identified with them and thus keep them alive within us. And it is through that process our soon-to-be Houston colleagues can take us with them as they continue the work that first flourished here. May those of us and what we built together guide them and serve them. For to forget who and what Menninger was in Topeka is to plant cut flowers in the Texas soil, end quote. So for me, to be here today, to join in this groundbreaking event, is not only a physical expression of Menninger's commitment to the future, but also an important validation of the work of thousands in Topeka that made this step possible. And now I offer a fitting connection to the last time the outpatient department moved in Topeka to West Campus. On this day, on the last day in North Office, which was an office located separate, my father took the sign that was des designated as the location of the outpatient department. And it is time for this sign to be here 
at its new home. So let the ground we break today allow to take root, grow, and blossom all that took place in the past. And let the ground we break today mobilize all of us to take on the new challenges we face in the future in providing the most comprehensive and effective mental health services for our nation and our world. And thank you very much. I can't tell you how meaningful this moment is. Thank you. Justice Rosen, thank you for being here with us today from Topeka and traveling during a pandemic. Uh, your remarks were amazing, so meaningful, and can't thank you enough for being here. Um, and without further ado, I think it's time to break some ground. Ready? So I just want to thank everyone for being part of this event, um, this incredible step in the future of the Manninger Clinic. Uh, all the staff that's here, uh, board members, um, again, Justice Rosen. Um, and of course, uh, our incredible donors who have really made this project possible. Uh, I can't thank you enough for your support of the Manninger Clinic, the community of Houston, uh, and, the, and the future growth of expanding mental health services. Um, I remain honored and humbled to lead the Menninger Clinic uh, and be part of this very special day. And we hope to see you all in person at the grand opening in the spring of 22. Thank you all again. <laughs>